all right so we'll start today with uh, sorting and filtering these two are very important features of excel again uh, many a times we uh, just use it randomly you might not use it within a function or something but it is required when we have a large data set right so basically first what is sorting uh, sorting is basically arranging the data in a particular format all right second arranging the data in a particular format so here for example i want to arrange my data uh, on the basis of country name from a to z right so what i'll do is there are two ways in which you can do sorting in the home tab we have sort and filter right so you all can just simply select sort and filter and here you can simply select sort a to z or sort z to a my data is already arranged in a particular order so i'll just click on sort a to z this will and see my cursor is here on country name so when i just click on sort a to z my entire data will be sorted as per a to z on the basis of country name obviously all the columns will change right all the columns will change otherwise if the all the columns are not changing then there will be problem in the data set if only column a is being arranged whereas column b c d e are same we'll get an error right so all these column will be changed on the basis of column a being arranged in ascending order a to z right fan or uh, switch off this fan so the next thing uh, we have is so the next thing we have is uh, there is something called as custom sort for example i want to arrange the country names from a to z and then i want to arrange the birth rate in an increasing order meaning uh, lower to higher amounts right so now there are two layers of sorting which i want to do so how to do that you can just simply keep your cursor anywhere within the table it can be anywhere within the table then click on sort and filter click on the option custom sort custom sort now here you will get a particular window so in this you can have multiple layers of sorting so for example the first thing is we have we have already sorted country name uh, on the cell values from a to z we can also sort on different ways cell values is the value which is contained in a cell you can also sort it in the particular cell color font color right for example in particular cells the font color is red i want all the font colors red font colors to be on the top and rest on the down so you can do that as well right so i want to sort on the basis of cell values i'll click on cell values a to z and click on okay so this is already done i want to add another layer of sorting so i'll click on add level add level here first it will be sorted by country name you all can see it is sorted by country name and then it will be sorted on the basis of the level of the level of birth rate right so i want to maybe then click on birth rate again it should be on the basis of cell values from smallest to largest you can change this to largest to smallest or you can create your own custom list as well right so i'll click on okay and see and see the thing has been sorted now and actually what has happened you will not see much of a change here because we have unique country names for example if we do not have unique country names let's sort it on the basis of income group first all right let's sort it on the basis of income group first because here we have unique country names so when the first layer of sorting is on the basis of country names from a to z and you have unique country names then your birth rate will not change because the first sorting is on the basis of country names right so there will be no change even if you add new layers but if you have something similar like firstly let's sort on the basis of income group lower to upper middle class lower middle class upper middle uh, low income uh, lower middle upper middle and high okay so let's sort it on that manner and then again the next layer will be birth rate and then see what results we'll get 
so I'll just sort it custom sort first this is the layer so I want to delete this so you just click on this and you can delete the level right similarly click on this delete the level done right it's done now you'll add the level I, I want to sort it on the basis of income group now the only problem over here is that how will you sort it on the basis of low income lower middle upper middle and high if you sort it from a to z or z to a this order will not be maintained right right because see we have l we have l for lower middle we have h here we have u so that a to z or z to a thing will not be maintained if you want it in a particular manner in that case we'll have to create a custom a list all right now custom list we'll talk if we'll talk about custom list there are many things for example i'll show you all when you will write january february in excel and you just select these two cells and you drag then january february march april you get the entire months right so this is something which has already been added in excel as a custom list so there are predefined custom list already existing in your excel but now you can also create your own custom lists right so that's too much of detail we'll not be doing in uh, this class but i'll show you how we can do it in custom sorting right so i'll just click on order and you can click on custom list right for me i think okay it's not created yet so these are the lists which are already existing in excel monday tuesday january february so monday tuesday are in different formats so here are the different lists which are already been created stored pre stored in excel you have to create a new list you'll click on new list and you can list all the entries make sure the entries you give press enter to separate the list entry so you have to just click on enter for example my first entry will be low income make sure you write it in a particular format capital l capital uh, small i right enter lower middle income we have high upper middle upper do it with me all right high income so this is how click on custom list this pop up uh, this box will appear and you can just create your own list now when you create your own list in this particular excel spreadsheet it will be stored at the back end of excel so you can use this list whenever you want right and i'll click on add click on add the moment you click on add see a new list has been added over here right a new list has been added over here you have to select this list click on ok the moment you click on ok and see now it will be the data will be sorted low income then we have lower middle we have upper middle we have high got it this is how we create a custom list custom sorting right ok now the next layer of sorting which i want to do is to is to add a layer of add a layer of birth rate smallest to largest right right first see the changes which are there already just see the changes which are there low income and this is the way in which it is arranged we have 35 we have 36 we have 40 this column will now be arranged basically the entire thing will only be arranged see now it's arranged in increasing to decreasing so for first what happened is that it will arrange my data on the basis of income group so we have all the low then lower middle then upper middle together and then within the low we have also sorted the birth rate you can add one more layer of internet users as well right clear when you can sort your internet users on the basis of again smallest to largest or largest to smallest clear any doubts till here just write a yes in the chat box if you are following through okay clear all right so now this is sorting of the data the next thing which we'll do now what sorting does to your data is it ch it changes the way in 
in which the data is presented right so generally uh, sorting is something which you should not do unless and until it's required because it changes the original data now see my original data is gone right i will never understand in what format my original data was actually actually was there right so sorting is only used when it is necessarily required a lot the next thing next thing is filtering what is filtering filtering is filtering out the data which is not required right or filtering getting the data which is required now here filtering will not mean that we are deleting some data the data exists we are just filtering out the information that we want right so you can there are two ways again in the home tab we have sort and filter now again in the data tab we have sort and filter there is advanced filtering also that we are not covering today so we have sort and filter as well you'll click on filter the moment you click on filter make sure your cursor is within any of these cells within the table and the moment you click on filter you can see these drop downs now you can filter your data as how you require so for example i want so for example i just want high income group i'll click on high income and click on okay so we have this entire data of all the countries which belong to high income group we'll get the data of all the countries which belong to maybe upper middle income right this does not mean that your existing data is deleted it only means that you can see only that data which you want to now here if you see we have 82 we have 83 84 so these are the row numbers right all the row numbers prior to this and between of these are not there why because those are filtered out now again you in order to remove filtering you can just click on this button filter and your data comes back to its original form so in case of filtering your data is not changing in any way in case of filtering your data is not changing what is the shortcut control shift l place your cursor anywhere within the table and use the shortcut control shift l control shift l and your filtering buttons will be there right so that is sorting and filtering sorting is arranging your data in a particular format filtering is filtering out the information that you don't need or filtering out the information that you only want to keep right right okay so the next thing that we'll move into is conditional formatting again very very simple yet a very dynamic option which is there it can be used again in many ways so here conditional formatting is to format your cells on the basis of a particular on on a particular basis base right so if suppose if suppose i want to highlight in my entire data i want to highlight the highest internet users and the lowest number of internet users i just want to highlight so there are two ways in which you can do you can just simply sort your data lowest to highest you will get the first row with the highest last row with the lowest or you can maybe filter out the information and you can just see which is the uh, largest and smallest and accordingly you can take out those rows but these tasks are a little uh, you can say time consuming so what we'll do instead is that we'll use conditional formatting formatting your data on the basis of certain conditions you can also use max function min function in order to extract internet users but you'll not be able to highlight those particular cells right you'll not be able to highlight those particular cells so what do we do here instead is that we use conditional formatting which is there on your home tab so on your home tab all the formatting options are there on your home tab so obviously this will also be there on your home tab now the first thing is to apply uh, conditional formatting is to select the entire column or maybe you just select when you just click on this button your entire column is selected right your entire column is selected maybe i don't want to select my entire column instead just i want to select this data so it will only select it till here 
it will not select the entire column it's it's on you right generally what we do is we select the entire column why because we hope that we are continuously inputting more rows below so this particular conditional formatting will apply to the entire column right so anyways you will get the same answers here i'll click on conditional formatting on the home tab we have conditional formatting just click on conditional formatting now there are different rules on the basis of which you can uh, perform conditional formatting for example i want to just highlight cells right highlight cells rule or we also have top bottom rules so i want to highlight the top first and bottom first right so i'll select top bottom rules top bottom rules in the top bottom rules just click on top bottom rules and here we have on the basis of whether you want to highlight top 10 items top 10 percentage suppose i want to highlight the top 5 can 5 percentage of countries which are within top 5 percent uh, internet users right so you can if i have 195 rows so what is 5 percent of 195 Five percent. You all have Excel in your in front of you. Just use your Excel, right? Five percent of 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 one ninety five. So nine point seven five. Basically nine nine cells will be highlighted, right? Nine cells will be highlighted. But I just want maybe I just want maybe the top one or top two depending on the data. So here I just want top first country uh, with the highest internet user so i will just select top 10 items select this top 10 items now you will see there are 10 cells which are highlighted i don't want to highlight top 10 cells i want to highlight top one cell so i can decrease the value from here so we have top one now you can also change the way you want to highlight suppose i want to highlight it with green and the text should be in dark green you can also use custom format over here and you can highlight the way you want suppose i want the fill fill is the cell color i want it to be in green this is how it will look like i want the font color to be um background color pattern color pattern color let's keep it as dark green right font color let's keep it as again dark green so here my my uh, cell will be highlighted with green and the font will be highlighted in dark green right just click on okay the moment you click on okay you will see there is one particular see one particular cell which is highlighted in green now what if i want to there was one more thing you can also filter your data on the basis of color just see control shift l control shift l okay just do it till here first select the entire column conditional formatting top bottom rules top 10 items decrease it to 1 right now just see just see over here i want to filter the information on the basis of cell color so i'll click here and there is something called as filter by color you can filter your cells by color so i want to filter my entire data on the basis of this green color so i'll just select and we have this particular row right we have this particular row clear if 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 it is clear till here then just give me a thumbs up and also now you all will highlight the cell with the lowest internet users in red all right highlight the cell color with red and maybe the font color with white okay try try doing that on your own and just give me the name of the country with the lowest internet users highlight it in red make sure you're doing it and you all can write a yes in the chat box once it's done
just write a yes in the chat box once it's done. Select the entire column, click on conditional formatting, top bottom rules, bottom 10 items and I will change this to 1. Red fill with dark red text. Okay. And then what is the lowest one? Right? 0.9%. Again, you can filter your data on the basis of font color. Right? Just write a yes in the chat box once it's done. So this is conditional formatting. You can highlight all those cells on a particular condition. So now this condition can be a condition or uh, this can this condition can be a custom condition as well. So for example, I want to highlight all the birth rates which are higher greater than 50. So I'll select conditional formatting. You can click on new rule. Just see you can click on click on new rule and here you can uh, select maybe format cells that contain a particular set of values maybe greater than. So I will select all those cells will be highlighted which are greater than maybe 50. Right? maybe 50 and you can format that in a particular order maybe I want to fill it with uh, let's take orange color click on ok so all these values which are greater than 50 will be highlighted in orange see see is there any value which is greater than 50 ok there is no value greater than 50 alright so now let me change this Manage rules, manage rules, so I'll have to edit this rule, just see, click on manage rule, click on, click on, click on manage rules, select this rule, click on edit, so I will select all the values which are greater than 40, okay, click on, okay, and apply see all the cells which are greater than 40 are highlighted right okay so that is conditional formatting formatting your cells on the basis of a particular order clear clear just write a yes in the chat box if it's clear Okay. Okay. Now the next thing that we'll move to is the date and text functions. Uh, there are many date and text functions available. What we'll be doing are the very basic ones which are required, right? There are multiple, many, many text and uh, date functions which we use um, for data manipulation. But what we'll be using are a few important ones, right? So for example, I want today's date in Excel. I want today's date in Excel. We'll use the formula, we'll use the function today. We'll use the function today. This will return the current, current date, right? And just simply close the bracket. There will be no input given to this particular function. And click, hit enter. This will give me today's date, 12th April 2022, right? This is giving me today's date. Now, this formatting might be a little different in your system. That will depend how your system formatting is done. For example, if you see on the bottom uh, right of your screen, 
you will see the date and today's time today's date and today's time so this is how i have kept my formatting month month date date year 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 for example for some of you it might be 12th april ap dash 2022 so it will depend how your uh, inbuilt system has taken the date now you can also modify this how you can just simply right click just simply right click click on format cells click on format cells here we have number date category is date now here there are different types in which you want to custom format your date if you want it in the this particular format 12th april if you want it in this format if you want it in this format so all these different formats are here for example you want your own way of writing right which is not present over here click on custom click on custom and here you can select different ways or you can even type your own formatting for example i want see for example i want dd mm yy so this is date month and for the year we just have 2020 or uh, 2020 right clear custom sorting generally we do these custom sortings when we want uh, the data to look in a particular format most of the times like many of the times the data which is given to you might not be in a desired way for example the data has been collected in a particular suppose the data has been collected from us so how they you know their way of writing is month month day day year year what we follow is day day month month which is the british version of following what they do is we, they write, they write it in the format of date date month month us in us they write it in the way of month month date date so suppose i want to change that data you can change your data using this custom or uh, format cells option right right generally we do this when we want to make our data look like what we prefer to it uh, it to be now i'll again change this to date and month right click on okay so this is today's date now for example uh, out from a particular date you want to extract just the day or the month or the year why do we need this i'll tell you because most of the times suppose uh, we have been given with different months and i suppose a particular cash flow is happening on july of each year right it's happening on july of each year so i will have to extract the month from the date to know whether the month is july or not right right so i can so i will be using something like if if the month is july then this will be the payment otherwise it will be zero right that is that is how we'll be using uh, the month function so here in order to extract day month year the functions are very simple the functions are day month and year so the functions are very simple so here we have day now you can give the serial number why it's written serial number see it's written serial number instead of a date it it is asking for a serial number why because in excel because in excel the dates are stored in a partic as a, as a numbers so if you just so if i am writing one over here this is uh, actually one of the very amazing things of excel so if i if i am writing one over here this one will represent a particular date or maybe other way round a particular date is representing a particular number so for example i am writing one and if i change this cell to a short date or to a date you will get 1st january 1990 so basically 1900 so basically what happened excel counts all the dates as a number where 1 is 1st january 1900 2 is 2nd january 1900 3 third january 1900 and so on so for example i want to know what today's date uh, stands for so i'll write 12th april 2022 i want to know what which serial number this date signifies so you can obviously change the formatting of the cell to general or number so this number is 44663 so from 1st january 
we have reached over here 44,663 number of days. So each date in Excel represents a particular serial number. Tomorrow it will be 44664. Right? That is why when you are writing the day function, it asks for a serial number. See, if you if you are giving, suppose I am giving this serial number. So my date will be 12. Automatically it will give me the answer as 12. Or you can definitely select a date as well. You can definitely select a date as well. Any routes? No. Similarly, we'll do it for month. So the function is month. It gives you the month number. A month number from 1, 1 is January, 12 is December. Right? So again, you can give the serial number or you can give a particular date. This will give us 4 and here, year will give us the year. day, month, year. Just like today we have a function called now. This function will give us date plus time. Just see now. Just open and close the bracket and it will give you the date and the time. Again, the time is in this particular format, 11.45. If you want to uh, change it to maybe 12 um, hour clock, 24 hour clock, you can do that. This is based on the system setting. The way in which your system dates are stored or set, that is how it will first represent. You can again change this. You can again change this. Now, this is very much dynamic. If you open your Excel spreadsheet, this particular Excel spreadsheet tomorrow, this date will change to 13th of April. And the time will also change. For example, now it's 11.46. Let me just... Uh, Alright. So, there is one more thing, one very interesting thing which happened uh, maybe yesterday. Uh, so, one student, uh, he was inputting a particular function but the function was not was not running. Maybe, for example, if I'm just writing uh, 2022 plus this. So the function is there, but the answer is not, answer maybe is same or something like that was happening with him. So what happened is that whenever in your Excel spreadsheet, if you perform any one function, suppose I'm performing a function over here, all the functions, existing functions which are there in your spreadsheet in all the sheets, will be continuously calculated or will be continuously changing. So for example, what happened when I calculated this function over here, this formula over here, this date changed automatically, this time changed automatically. So what Excel is doing in every microsecond, the calculations are being re-performed again and again. So whenever you're performing any one calculation in any one part of your spreadsheet, all the calculations are being re-performed at the same time. But if I do not want to do this, if I want to stop this particular, you know, re-performing of the function again and again, then what you can do, please do not do this. Please do not do this. But if you want some time, if you want it, just go to the formulas bar, formulas tab. Here we have calculation options. And here you can select manual, automatic, automatic except for data tables. So here by default it should be automatic. Always keep it in this automatic format. Why I'm teaching you all this is it's it's very simple basic but I have seen uh, maybe one or two students the settings might change to manual and then they're not able to perform any calculations. So suppose if my setting is now changed to manual just see what happens. Just see what happens if I change this to manual. Alright, I've changed this to manual. So now what will happen is, so now what will happen if I write the same formula again, if I write the same formula again, this plus this. 
I am getting the answer, but this is not changing. But this is not changing. So when the setting has been changed to manual, the calculation which you are performing right now, the function which you are performing right now will only change. All the other functions, all the other formulas will not change. That is why this time is not changing right now. When it was automatic, the time changed by itself. So always keep this automatic. Now for example, for example, just see if I want to, if I now want to perform the calculations manually, obviously you will not go to each cell and perform it manually. There is something called as calculate now or the shortcut for it is F9. I will not press the shortcut because I am recording my screen so it will shut down. So just click on F9 or Fn F9 and you will see the calculation will perform automatically or this uh, this button over here calculate now just see if I once click this calculate now the time will change the time changed so calculate now is basically you are guiding Excel that okay now calculate all the functions and formulas again for me clear clear this is amazing amazing thing of Excel but always keep it at automatic always we always keep it at automatic sometimes when we do not want all the prior calculations to change then we change this uh, setting to manual please it's a request do not keep it at manual right okay all right so that is your date functions now we'll move to some of the text functions now these text functions are um, you can say there are many many text functions what I'll be teaching you today is just a few uh, ones so firstly I have written actuators educational institute in three different cells right I want to combine the this entire uh, thing into one cell so how I can do that select this cell this is the ampersand symbol or the and symbol. We call this as ampersand. Or this is used to concatenate, combine two particular strings. Then I will select the educational ampersand institute. All right. And I will hit enter and you will get actuators educational institute the only problem over here is spaces are not there the spaces are not there now how can we manually input the spaces so what we are what we'll do is that what we'll do instead is again just see a7 and I want to insert a space in between right so within double quotes you will insert a space why within double quotes? It's a string and string is always written within double quotes. And educational and okay here again there will be a space first and make sure you are giving these and symbols correctly otherwise you will not get the correct answer. Just see. And when you hit enter, you will get the desired output. done done okay so here I will get actuators educational institutes for example instead of spaces I wanted something else you can put that within quotes 
right? Now three other functions that we'll be doing is right, left and mid. So basically for example I want uh, from this actuators educational institute I just want word institute from the right. So I will use this right function select this text string and the number of characters which you want to extract. So for example I want to extract 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 characters. So this will give me institute. If I write 10 characters, it will give me institute with a space. If I write 11, institute space L A. Right? So space is also cal counted as a character. Similarly, we have left function. Just see, we have left function. So from the left, how many characters do you want to extract? So I want to extract 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 characters again. And we have actuators. Similarly, we have mid. So mid is a little different than left and right. Mid is from middle how many characters you want to extract. So I will select this. Then you have to state the starting number. Starting number meaning from where do you want to start the extraction. So I want to start from 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. The space is counted as 10. And I want to start extracting from 11th, from E. So I will write 11, sorry, 11. Right? Just wait one second. Okay. Mid, comma, 11. I want to start the extraction from E. Now, how many characters do you want to extract? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So this will give me education, right, mid function. First you will tell the starting position from where you want to start the extraction. I want to start the extraction from here, E. So 9 plus 10, 11. The spaces are also counted as characters. Clear, clear, left, right, mid and ampersand. So these are a few text functions. There are multiple text functions again. These are the basic ones. Can we move to the next topic? Just write a yes in the chat box. If it's clear till here. Shall we move to the next topic? Okay. So now the next thing very very interesting is the graphs. So there are different graphs which we can make in Excel or you can say multiple amazing graphs which we can make. We'll be learning some very basic and some important graphs which are used widely. There are multiple graphs which are used by analysts, people who are dealing with share markets, who are into share markets trading. They also use Excel a lot uh, in order to make certain and there are charts like candlesticks, spark lines. These are some of the charts which are used in financial analysis. We will not go into details. We will be learning the basic ones. Ones which are used widely across all those fairs, right? So here we have, I have taken a small data set. Actually, it's a part of a big data set which I have taken over here. We have just taken a few rows. So I have age, gender, BMI, Number of children, smoker status, region and charges. So the, this is an insurance data set which I have taken with me. Um, age is the age of the policy holder. These are the different policy holders. We have gender, male, female. We have BMI which is body mass index. Uh, of the person, we have the number of children 0, 1, 2, 3 depending on the number of children that those are there. Smoker status, yes or no? Yes meaning the person is smoker, no meaning the person is not a smoker. We have different regions, southwest, southeast, northwest, northeast and then we have the charges. These charges are the premiums that the policy holders are paying to us. Right? Okay. So now I'll be showing you all different charts that we can make on this particular data and also if you all remember last class we have done this frequency table so we'll also be making a chart on this. So firstly let's make a chart on this frequency table. So you might have learned that we have created this frequency table. You might have also created something called as bar chart. So if I say the birth numbers so in a chart there is x-axis and there is y-axis right. So in my x-axis I'm plotting all the birth rates 
0, 10, 0, 5, 10, 20, so on. And then the numbers, which is the frequency of each bar. So it will look good as a bar chart, right? It will look good as a bar chart. So I will select birth rate, I will select number and I will sel select this entire table. I will select this entire table. This is the first thing. This is the first thing. Then go to insert. Go to insert. And here we have different chart options with us. You might also have recommended chart options if you are using a latest version of Excel. I will not suggest you all to use this recommended chart option a lot. Why? Because uh, it sometimes gives distorted charts. So we'll directly use we'll directly use this column or bar chart over here. And there are multiple charts you can select from. So I'll be selecting this very first one. Clustered column. Or is there a simple one? No. So I'll be selecting this clustered column. Insert. Column. Clustered column. The first one. But the output which I'm getting is not correct. The output which I'm getting is not correct. What is wrong with the chart? Both the both the columns are plotted on the x-axis so we also have the birth rate and we also have the number so which is wrong the birth rate should be x-axis and the number column should be the y-axis right both the columns are plotted which is wrong so how to change this do it till here i'll show you all because this is a very important step done it till here you have done it till here right right click on the chart right click on the chart you will get the option of select data you will get the option of select data select data here we have legend series or we have the horizontal axis horizontal axis means the x-axis what do you want on your x-axis first? I want the birth rates. So I'll click on edit. X, ac, ac, axis label range. So I will select 0 to 50. Don't select birth rate. You just want the range 0 to 50. And click on OK. Do it till here. edit and within this range select this entire 0 to 50 range click on ok done done the next thing is the legend series uh, you might remember that when you used to make those maps, geographical maps, maps we used to make keys, right? Green, green for land, blue for water, yellow for desert, something like that, right? Brown for mountains. So similarly in these charts, we have a legend or a key. We call it as a legend in Excel, in our programming, we call it as legend. So what do we want in the legend or the y-axis? We just want the number. So we'll remove this birth rate. Click on this and click on remove. Click on that and click on remove. Now here we have just the number. Right? Right? Okay. And click on OK. Change this number to count. Count looks better. Alright. So we have... In the x-axis, we have all the birth rates. On the y-axis, we have the count. Now, just do it till here and write a yes in the chat box. Just write a yes in the chat box once this is done. The next thing is, I want to label my chart properly. The title the x-axis, the y-axis, these should be labeled properly. How to label it? Click on the chart. The moment you click on the chart, there are some additional tabs which are 
present chart design format these are additional tabs if you click somewhere outside of the chart these tabs are gone right these tabs are gone so we have these different tabs click on chart design we have a quick layout option uh, all right bhuvan you have to right click click on select data click on select data firstly edit the x axis click on edit over here click on edit over here for the x axis you will select 0 to 50 so select 0 to 50 and click on okay do it till here right click select data change the x axis then for your legend entries you might have <clears throat> birth rate here click on birth rate and click on remove click on birth rate and click on remove right is it clear till here is it clear till here The next thing is um, just to click on OK and you have your values, right? Now we'll add certain um, options over here where we want to uh, give a axis, x-axis title, y-axis title. I want to change the title, the main title of the chart. So just click on the chart, click on chart design and click on this quick layout option or maybe add chart element any of it add chart element in this add chart element we have access titles we have access titles you can add primary horizontal you can also add primary vertical right we have access titles we have access titles over here click on this access title and you all can just simply just click on it and you can start writing on the formula bar you can start typing on the formula by this will be birth rates birth rates and just click on enter we have birth rates for y axis you can just simply write count and for the title you can write birth distribution distribution of countries on birth rate distribution of countries on birth rates make sure whenever you make a chart it is a very professional uh, concept that you give the proper chart title you give proper ac access title it looks very professional to the one who is seeing the spreadsheet and even to you you will understand later on when you open this excel spreadsheet you will understand okay what I have plotted over here otherwise it becomes very difficult to understand what you have actually plotted right you can remove this legend over here you can see your legend we don't require any legend in this case because we just have one variable right so you can just click on this count and click on delete click on delete and see we have all the birth rates for 0 and 5 it is 0 for 10 15 and so on we have the respective counts just do it till here just do it till here All right. Okay. The next thing is if I want to change the range of my y axis. So you can see the val values are going from 0 to 60. I want to change this. I want to maybe just keep it till 0 to 55 or maybe something like that. 
So how you can do it? Just double click over here on the Y axis. Just double click. The moment you double click, you will get this format access option. Uh, it might look a little different for some of you. I am using Office 365. If you are using some other version, it might look a little different for you. But the options are same. The options are almost same. It might although look a little different for you for those who are using some other version. For those using latest versions or using Office 365, it might look exactly the same. Now here we have the access options. The minimum is 0, maximum is 60 and major unit is 10. What is this major unit standing for? The difference between the two units. 10, 10, 10, 10, right? I want to change this to 5. Just type 5 and you can see it has changed. It has changed. Units, major unit to 5. clear here um, so now the maximum is 55 and minimum is 0 so it's fine and you can just click on the cross right this is how you can also do it for your x-axis but no point in changing x-axis because we have 0 5, uh, 5 10 15 it's in the desired format only now the next thing which I want over here the next thing which I want over here is that I want the numbers. So suppose for this bar, for this bar, the value of 15 is 51. The value is 51. So I want 51 over here. I want on top of all the bars, the exact values. How to get the exact value? Again, just click on the chart, chart design, add element. And we have data labels. And we have data labels. So you can add data labels. Maybe on the center of the bars. You can see the bar is changing. Inside. Inside the base. Outside. So you can just select. I want to just keep it outside the bars. We have the data labels. We have the data labels. If I want to remove these grid lines, these are known as the grid lines. These are known as the grid lines. If I want to remove this grid lines. So just click on these grid lines. Click on this just one time. Just click one. Just left click once on this any of this grid line and click on delete. The grid lines are gone. If I want the grid line again, if I want the grid lines again, go to chart design, add element and we have an option of grid lines. Major, horizontal, vertical, minor, minor vertical, minor horizontal. So I just want major horizontal lines or maybe major vertical lines, any whatever you prefer, right? Right. Okay. Now the last thing. So there are multiple ways you can design your chart. Right. There is no end of designing your chart. The last thing which I'll teach you is if I want to increase the width of all the bars, just double click on any of the bar. On any of the bar, all the bars will be selected. Just double click on any one bar. Just double click on any one bar. And we have this option of gap width, series overlap. So gap width, just reduce this gap width. And you will see the bars are increasing. The width is increasing. Alright? Alright? You can also change the color of these bars. From here you can select this option. 
from here you can select this option and you can change the colors as well I don't want to do it right now so I'll just leave it like this so as and when you play with these charts and you will be using charts a lot in your Excel you will learn and you will get habituated with these different functionalities and you will also learn some more uh, features of how you can edit your charts moving ahead so this is a column chart which I have created we've added a title we've added the x-axis y-axis labels we have removed the grid lines we've added new grid lines we have also added data labels right so this is how this is the basic editing and designing of your chart this is the basic editing and designing of your charts once it is done till here just write a yes in the chart box what I will suggest is you can also play around with these different charts so this is one chart there are three different charts which I'll be teaching you all today editing is exactly similar in all the different types of chart x-axis y-axis main title grid lines increasing the width of the uh, columns so all these things are same for all the different types of charts I will show you all some more types for today and then I will suggest you all to work around with these different charts by yourself right so I will just keep it over here I can decrease the size a bit and I can keep it over here all right now the next thing next thing is so here back again to the original data that uh, we were dealing with the insurance data here I will uh, make a chart a pie chart I want to see uh, that what is the distribution of the number of children so basically the children we can see 0 1 2 3 0 1 2 and 3 yeah because it's a very small data for example I might have 100 of rows then I just want to see the distribution how the distribution of the 0 1 2 3 looks like so I will insert something called as a pie chart Somet something called as a pie chart so it is very simple you can just select the children column just select the children column insert and you can select a pie chart A simple pie chart the only difference you will see is that the pie chart is wrong right because all these numbers are taken separately into account which is wrong so first I want again the distribution how many children are there who are 0 1 2 and 3 how many policy holders are there with 0 1 2 and 3 children so here I can again quickly use Excel functions to get the numbers right so we have 0 we have 1 we have 2 we have 3 now how to get the count we'll use the function called count if very good count if the range just see this will be the range and we'll keep this as fixed because the range will not change fixed comma the criteria is zero how many zeros are there how many zeros are there close the bracket and hit enter we have the distribution so how many policy holders with zero children 10 how many policy holders with three children 2 right right just try it down till here
okay so after this after this what we'll be doing over here is that now once we have calculated the count you can simply select the entire thing insert a pie chart now you can see we have a proper pie chart over here okay one second sort pie chart the only thing which is wrong over here is that this children is taken as a number so that is why we are getting a wrong answer over here again we can just simply select data we can simply select data and what are we going to do is we'll remove this children right here we'll edit the x values these are our x values and click on okay click on okay so these are our x values 0 1 2 3 and count is our y value so here what do we see we have how many zero children policy holders this much and suppose now again you want the percentages within your pie chart so we have different options you can again add chart labels maybe outside right you can add chart labels if you want instead the percentages you can also add percentages you can also add there are see different ways there are different different options over here in the chart design you can add percentages if you want this is giving you the number and the percentage both this is giving you the number and the percentage both right so it's upon you uh, which chart design you select and then i will change this to policy holders number of policy holders with given number of children right So now on the basis of this pie chart we can observe that the highest number of policy holders are with zero number of children there are only two policy holders with three number of children right is it done till here is it done till here right okay so the next chart that we learn the next chart that we learn is let me keep the okay i think hmm. the next chart that we learn over here is the line chart so suppose i want to see a trend in the charges i want to see a trend in the charges so uh, i'll be using a data let's use this data only i wanted to actually extract the data on a share price so you can also basically we see a trend of the share price in last 6 months in last one year right i wanted to do that here you can also do it you can just take out uh, just use this yahoo finance yahoo finance yahoo finance the first one which comes up you can select the name of the share which you want sbi for example sbi n dot ns this is nsc listed share price and you can select the data from here we have see we have the financials uh i want the historical data i want the historical data open high low so you can just take this data you can download this data this will be downloaded in the form of a excel or a csv file and you can copy paste the data and you can plot the line chart so you can do that on your own right yahoo finance 
what I'll be doing is that I'll be just using this data charges data to show you all how the line chart looks like. So I have selected the char charges column, go to the insert and insert a line chart from here. Insert a line chart from here. So we can see, so we can see that the charges are varying. The charges are varying. So there are 16, there are 16 uh, policy holders. So for all these 16 policy holders, what do we see? We are see that the charges are different. Uh, so it ranges from maybe the lowest one is somewhere around here, uh, 1725 to highest is somewhere around 40,000, right? You can again label all your y-axis and x-axis, click on this plus button and you can have axis title. Click on this, when you click on the chart, this, there's a plus button over here. You can click on axis titles and you can type policy holders and here we have the charges that they are paying. Premiums paid by policy holders. Right? Right? Similarly, you can also add a scatter plot. What is a scatter plot? Instead of showing this trend, because see, there is no as such as trend over here. You don't see any don't see a trend over here. Why? Because there are 16 policy holders. All these policy holders are very much different to each other. So we cannot actually compare the charges. Some have zero children, some have three children, some are smokers, some are not smokers. So you cannot actually compare. We generally make a line chart when we want to compare a data. Right? For the birth rate, you can compare the birth rate with for a particular country over the number of years. But you cannot compare the trend of different countries, right? It will be definitely different. So how, why will we compare the trend? We can compare the trend of a share price. One month, two months, three months and so on. So here, just for an explanation, I've shown you all how you can draw a line chart. I have shown you all how you can download the data from here. Just type Yahoo Finance, type the name of the share. And in this uh, <clears throat> historical data, we can just uh, download the file from here. So it will give us data from one year time, daily data and you can download the file. Right? You can do that at your own time. The next thing that I'll show you the last chart for today which I'll show you is the scatter plot. Now instead of making this line chart, instead of making this line chart, I could have also made, I will click on insert. I will select this, click on insert and click on the scatter plot. So this scatter plot will basically give you the different charges for different policy holders. And what do we see? We see that it is scattered all around, meaning there is no consistent charging structure. For some it is very high, for some it is very low, right? This is again to understand the distribution of a particular column. Again, you can rename the y-axis and x-axis right so that is all now within within this uh, uh, within this scatter plot also we have this option of line with markers we have smooth lines with markers we also have smooth lines so see the difference between this chart that we are creating and the chart over here that we created using the line chart see here if i'm using line with markers so it will give you the smooth line along. So these are smooth lines and whereas these are proper lines which show you the proper trend. So when you are finding the trend of some data, you will use this line chart. When you just want to observe the distribution, you can use the scatter plots. Clear? So these are the four bar chart, line chart. Uh, bar or column chart, line chart, scatter plots and pie chart. These are few important charts that we use. There are multiple different charts, but these are the some common charts that we use on a daily basis. Right? So I will just keep it here. I will just keep it here. Okay. 
any doubts so far what i will suggest you all is you all can just go through uh, you know you can try creating different charts uh, you can import this data which i showed you all on any particular share price and you can just see the trend of that particular share how it has performed over one year if you see over two years if you see the data of 2020 you will see how low the prices went and again how uh, you can see check this for any bank check it for SBI take two years data and just see the entire line chart and you will see how it has performed over the years so this is how we use charts right so that is it for today if you all have any doubts I will share one practice assignment with you all uh, make sure you all do that before next class and if you all have any doubts you all can ask me right now any doubts any questions any queries Just give me a thumbs up or a yes in the chat box if it's clear. Clear? All right. Thank you. Good. Thank you. So I will share the file with you all. Make sure you sit down and do do all the questions. Uh, it is a culmination of all what we have done so far. So you will be able to revise all the uh, functions and everything. And then we will discuss that in the next class. Right? Thank you so much.